Hey, everybody, this is a preview of today's members episode. If you want to hear the whole thing, head on over to the confessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. Today, we have Stephen here in studio. We're going to jump in this conversation. Stephen, what's going on, man? Not much, man. How about you? Hey, I'm glad you're here. Uh, so, apparently, you and I uh, were supposed to record years ago. Yeah, a long time ago. And that, that conversation never uh, came to fruition. Don't remember. Probably me. It's probably a me problem, not a you problem. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then we, it was me, Joe, and Jack. We went down to Legends of the Lord Pizza mm -hmm. and we were having dinner and uh, we had ordered our pizza waiting on it. And you come over and start talking to us. And uh, you just started telling us all these stories and stuff. And I was like, hey, man, I should get you on the show. And you're like, funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I don't know if you remember the conference last year. I'm the guy that stood up at the end and that's asked right. the crazy question. <laughs> <laughs> trying to blast yeah. out the BFRO people. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Did you ask that question on purpose? To, yeah. Like, I felt like they was picking on it, to be honest, because they're like, you can't take a story and turn it into this. I remember that. And they're strictly animals. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That was me. I'm even the guy that made Matt Moneymaker mad about when he was going around asking the uh, questions with the scientist guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I even made Matt Moneymaker mad where he's mad enough he turned to give me the most hateful look you've ever seen. Did he really? Oh, yeah. My son sat there and watched it happen. Did, could you feel the eyes just oh, glaring? Yes. Yeah, you're like, ooh, geez. Well, yeah, we made eye contact and I was like, huh? Did you, you know? smile? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I even said a few choice words. Did you? Oh, yeah. Because what I was, you know, that guy was there to do, um, give his take on what his studies he was going to do differently than anybody else. Well, I was like, well, this guy sounds like everybody else. <clears throat> we're going to take the samples. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But what happens most time? They come back contaminated. Yeah. So I was like, well, I've got a question. So Matt came over. I was like, well, how is this guy going to prove that he is going to be much different? And I went on to this other little stuff. And Matt said, great question. Turn around and ask something totally different. I'm like, dude, that's not even what I freaking <laughs> asked. And I'm just sitting there going off. He turns and just gives me the god awful look. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's hilarious. It it's made funny. my day. Was it, so I, I wasn't there during that part. I was probably at our booth or something. And uh, I I didn't see that interaction, but that's mm. hilarious. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people in that row got, got to see it and thought, yeah. man, you made him medicine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't care either. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know uh, what. I, I don't know what the whole thing is with Matt, but I know he rubs some people the wrong way. Yeah. Um, he, he doesn't rub me the wrong way, probably because I don't know him well enough. Yeah. I haven't looked into it all and stuff. And and honestly, like, I, I mean, I had um, uh, Matt Pruitt on the show not too long ago, who is very much a flesh and blood kind of guy. And yeah. obviously that's, I mean, I, I'm flesh and blood to the extent that, yeah, when they're in this realm, they're flesh and blood, but yeah. I don't think they're always in this realm. And uh, I, I think what's could what you see here in this realm could go to another realm uh, when it feels like. So obviously that's where the, the divide happens. But I had a great conversation with Pruitt and mm -hmm. I, I thought it was it was educational. He presented great arguments. And um, I think I'd have a great conversation with with uh, with Moneymaker, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Right. Uh, I, I, and I haven't tried, just to be clear, I haven't tried to get him on the show. Uh, but even if I did, I, I imagine he's pretty bu busy. I'm just glad I was able to get Bobo on the show, um, mm -hmm. which he was fun. Oh, yeah. Bobo's cool. I, I think he's pretty about the neatest one out of all of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's he's just, he's definitely the most unique character. Um, and uh, he, he, anyways, he's a good dude. But uh, at the conference, when you, when you asked that question, yeah. I, I do remember sitting there on stage and I don't know who said it. Somebody was talking about how, you know, the people's uh, stories about these things aren't the most accurate and reliable mm -hmm. evidence. I'm, and and I was sitting there, I was like, no, they're not going to like me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> That's, that was my exact thoughts because I mean, where did all this stuff come from? Stories yeah. from generation on generation. How do you know about Bigfoot? Yeah. Well, I heard about it. Yeah. My, <laughs> my people and his people or what do you know? Yeah. Like from generation to generation, even the Cherokee stories. You mean to tell me these historical stories are just stories? They don't mean nothing. Yeah. So, I mean, here's the thing with that. I think that like th their point would be that the stories are the launching pad into further evidence. You need further evidence beyond a story. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way they relay that, I think, and maybe even they do feel this way at times, uh, but I, I feel like there's a certain level of poo-pooing the story at some point right. when you're trying to pursue evidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that it would behoove people, and I don't want to say any names in particular, but just people like that, um, 
to refrain from doing that and remember the foundation of what this whole thing's built on. Like your interest in the topic came from a story. Right. You didn't, most people didn't stumble across Bigfoot themselves or a, a footprint that was 20 inches long and 10 inches wide. Mm -hmm. They heard about it and they were interested and they started looking at it. They, mm -hmm. And they started researching. Then they started doing all these other things, trying to find further evidence. But the whole reason why you're even there is because you heard about it and you believed it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or you believed it enough to find it interesting enough and research it. So, Because something about that story intrigued you to follow that story. Yeah. It, it's, and I guess is the right way to say it to me. But, I mean, <laughs> everything's based off stories. I mean, everything we know today is based off stories, whether they're a little, you know, a little out there or they're just domesticated or whatnot. It's, it's the baseline of what we, we, this subject's on. Yeah. Pretty much. That's all we got. I, and I, I feel like, um, I, I look at myself, I was talking to, um, I can't remember now. It was uh, Timothy Alberino at the Blurry Creatures, Blurry Con Conference. And him and I were walking out at the end of the day and I was telling him about what I do and everything. And, um, you know, like I get insecurities with things, you know, like I, I, I still, after I'm, you know, I'm coming up on 650 episodes, seven years into this. And I still feel like I have imposter syndrome at times. And, uh, you know, I told him, I was like, you know, there's parts of me that at times feels like I don't do anything of value. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I know that's not true, right. but you know, I'm basically the story guy, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and he encouraged me to to not feel that way and to lean into it and be like, that's your that's your role, that's your place in all this, right? You know, because I, I don't feel, my I'm not a researcher, my brain doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. I I uh, and part of it's probably just because I've drinking too much fluoride in my life, <laughs> I can't stay <laughs> focused long enough. But um, so I, I really started embracing that, you know, like I, if you take it to the Native Americans, you know, the tribal story mm -hmm. you tell her, the person who hands off the, uh, the generations of knowledge of the tribe are often people who uh, are identified as children mm -hmm. that have good memory, good recall, and uh, are good at relaying the message, right? And I just kind of feel like maybe that's my place in this world, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I'm not to say I can't do other things, but... Uh, I do feel like maybe, you know, I am that the just the modern tribal storyteller of, right, of like, all this stuff, you exactly, know, yeah. just kind of documenting it. So, uh, but you grew up around here mm -hmm. and you have countless stories. I mean, you were just dumping them at the, at the, uh, the pizza shop. And I was like, you want to come in? And so, uh, fortunately, you know, it's a Thursday and your boss lets you come in and leave. And you said you're still getting paid. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I said, he's into the subject too. We're, we're golden. That's great. That's oh, yeah. great. So um, let's start off with your personal experiences, though. Okay. Um, do you have uh, encounters with cryptids? I know you do did the paranormal as well as far as you do paranormal research, oh, right? I, I I like to. I would like to, but I don't get out often as I want it, as I would like to, You know, yeah. if that makes sense. I know I'm kind of blabbering, but... Um, I did a lot of stuff growing up in the paranormal. I didn't really get into the cryptids probably about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Because what made me get into it, I was talking to my buddy, you know, it's actually my boss and at work now, you know, we, he got to relaying the message to me about this, that stuff. And it made me think about what happened to me in 2012. For the longest time, I thought it was a bear, but evidence now points towards it. It wasn't. Mm. So if you want me to go into yeah, that. Yeah, go for it. So, yeah. Back in 2012, around October, I believe it was, it was late deer season. No, let's say November. Yeah, it was around November. Uh, it was the weekend after one of the bear seasons had just closed. Um, and usually when I'm hunting up there, I hunt up there in the South Cherokee National Forest of Monroe County. And I usually, it's me and my papa. We're always together. We was always hunting together. We would always, you know, go one way or the other. We'd always meet back in the middle, usually. Well, my papa was 73, maybe 74, and just last week retired from logging all his life. He's 73, 74 now? Yeah. And he just retired from logging? Yeah. Wow. We're talking cutting trees down, setting chokers, driving the skidders, all of it. Wow. Just retired last week, and he's done Congrats it all his life. Him. The Skyway Road up there, he built it. He's part of the crew that built it, helped wow. build it, dynamite it, and all the other stuff. <clears throat> but anyways... But he had to work this weekend. He's always a hard working man. So he had to work. He needed to go to work. And I thought, 
okay, well, I'll just go by myself. And I had this spot picked out, and it's kind of hard to explain where the spot is. It's just a spot I'd have to show you because it's just one of the random pull-offs there on, on the Skyway Road going up. Um, so I, I had seen deer sign in there before, sign of a big buck, been in there, you know, numerous times. He's had the whole area rubbed up. So that morning I get there, I'm probably at the parking spot about mm, two and a half, three hours before daylight because I've got like a five high mic hike back in the woods. So I get my stuff together, walk back through there, nothing out of the normal, just dark. You know, you hear your little critters and whatnot. I get to my spot. I just set in for the day and I just sit there and just watch the sun come up. Um, nothing really happens. It, it, nothing happens till I go to leave. Um, so b- basically I start to see the sun come down long story short, because all I didn't seen was pigs and deer, little does and stuff like that. So you were there all day. I was there all day. Cause when you go into the mountains like that, as far as I went, you're not going to go in there for two, three hours and walk two, three hours back. It's not worth it. Yeah. I'd go in there and set up camp and just sit there. Cause I'd carry my backpack with all my essentials and stuff in it. So I was there all day. Okay. Like I said, the only thing come through was a, Big old pig. I should have shot him, but I wasn't dragging that sucker out by myself. <laughs> so, uh, it's, I could have used him for bait for something else, though, I if you were thinking yeah. about it. Well, well <laughs> yeah, it, it gets better with this whole story. So, it's the end of the day. I see the sun coming down. I'm gauging my, you know, my sun sign by the my, my fingers and stuff. That old scouts trick, or whatever. You know, I've never been in scouts. Um, so I'm like, okay, it's time to go. So I pack up my stuff. I'm walking out, and I'm just be bobbing down, and I. Always walk out of the woods, even in or out, with my rifle unloaded. Not, I'll have it loaded in the tube because I carry an old Marlin thirty thirty, um, but I don't carry one in the chamber because you could fall, get you know, go off and hit yourself or whatever. Yeah. So just, I'm walking out, gun and got my backpack on, just beep bop around, looking around. It's my own business. I hear a little shuffle to my right. I stopped and looked. Not really nothing. Didn't hear nothing else. I go walking some more, and this time. I start to hear shuffle. It was like a shuffling. It wasn't a walk. It was more like a shuffle type thing. And I hear it getting closer and I can hear it. It's keeping up with me. I stop again. I'm thinking, okay, I had a honey bun while sitting back there. I thought, okay, maybe that honey bun drew in a bear or something. I don't know. And I think about this. We only have black bear here in East Tennessee. They're not very big. They don't get very big. The biggest one I've ever harvested when it was field dressed was that. 95 pounds. What? Yeah. They don't get very big. Hold on. A, a, a black bear that's 95 pounds? Yeah. Wow. They don't get very big around here. Like, you, know, you go to Cade's Cove, they're monsters. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Gotcha. Because yeah. Because they're fed there. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Oh, now it's making <laughs> sense because like we, we were, uh, we were in Gatlinburg and we had a, a very large bear walking through the parking lot next to my truck, but right. they're being fed there. Gotcha. They're, yeah, they're big, okay. But over in, in South Cherokee, they're very wild and they don't have a lot of feed source. It's over the last few years, they've had a lot of hard times trying to get acorns and all this other stuff to eat. But anyway, so what I stopped and I said, all right. And I talk, start to talk out loud. And I said, okay, bear, I know you're up there. You just stay up there. We won't have no problems. So I go walking again. Walking right up beside me. I can't see what it is because it's very thick. There's a big large thicket up on that side of the mountain. I can't see what it is. All I can do is hear it. Now I'm just going down there and going, hey, bear, you know, hey, I know you're just talking to it and being loud, being aggressive in a way of my voice, but mm-hmm. it never did budge. It just stayed right with me. So we go on down through a little bit more. And this time I hear a twig snap and it's a lot closer. I said, oh, okay, you're getting a little too close for comfort. So I start yelling again. I said, all right, you need to go on. Let's go on. So we walk some more. Gets a little closer. And this time I'm getting a little little antsy. So I go ahead and I load, rack my round into the chamber. On my 30-30, I don't have a safety, but I can flip the, the, the hammer forward. So all I got to do is pull it up, pull the hammer back, and go to business. So we're going down through our, and this time I start to turn to face where the noise is. And I sat, I thought, okay, let's see what the, what will happen if I speed up. So I started to speed up a little bit, sped right up with me. As soon as I would abruptly stop, it would abruptly stop. I'm thinking, God, this bear, this it's acting. I knew it was acting weird. It was acting very weird. And that, you know, growing up, we never thought twice to Bigfoot. We never thought of Bigfoot or nothing like that. Only thing we heard close to Bigfoot growing up was the wood boogers, but that's about it. Mm. But I'm thinking, okay, I'm almost to the truck. I've got to see if I can get him out. So 
on the trail, it does a little a little curve, and the TWRA cuts some clearing out right there to plant some grass for deer can come in there and eat and whatnot. So in this curve, it dips down. It makes like a big V. You got the other part of the mountain here, and you got this little ridge that the grass part, the grassy portion sits on. So I'm thinking, okay, he's still what if this bear is still right here on this right hand side, and he's got to come down. And if he's going to keep beside me, he's going to have to come down in that bowl, that, that V, the bottom of that V, and then come up behind me into the field. So I said, okay, I'm going to jump into the V and then jump right back into the field and see if he comes out. So I speed up a little bit. I can hear it keeping right up with me. I hit the V, jump up the ridge, and then I'm listening, and I'm walking through the field. And I'm listening how closer and closer he's getting. I'm just timing. I'm just walking. I'm like, all right, ready? One, two, three. I flip around. There's nothing. Not a thing. I can hear it, but I cannot see it. This was a preview of today's member episode. If you want to hear the whole thing, head on over to the confessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today.